Okay, I wanna show you guys in this video how we can add charts and diagrams right to um, a map in QGIS. It's super smooth, super slick. So we're gonna start by adding in some data here. And this data is available in two locations. These are actually data from my newest course, which is Next Level QGIS, Mastering Spatial Analysis. So I'm gonna add in this this data set here that's gonna show some watersheds and NDVI. And the other place they're available is all my videos are available ad-free with data on Geospatial School. So just look for the ad-free YouTube videos and sign up for that. Um, and you can get the data and the videos ad-free on demand. So let's go ahead and take a look at these data. So what we have here, and I'll open up the attribute table to show you, is we have watershed boundaries. And I've run some zonal stats, and you can go through this whole process in the uh, Next Level QGIS course. And I have the mean NDVI for three dates. So I have April 19th, June 6th, and August 17th. And then I've also calculated the change in NDVI from April to June, from June to August, And from April to August, we get the change for each of those different time periods. So a negative change means we have a decrease in NDVI, a decrease in greenness, and a positive change means we have an increase in greenness. And so we can use QGIS to show for each watershed what these different NDVI signatures might look like through time. And the way we do this is if we double click or right click on this layer, so we can double click to bring up properties, like this, or we can right click to bring up properties like this. And once we have that, we come down to diagrams, just like this. And we change no diagrams. We can go to pie chart, text diagram, histogram. We're gonna use a histogram, which is just a bar chart. And we're gonna use that for this example. Okay, so we select that. And now we want to go into our attributes option here. And so we can select different um, attributes we want to show. I'm going to select the average NDVI and oops, and add them over like this. And once they're over here, I can change the legend. So we can call this April. We can call this June. And we can call this August. And three letter abbreviations might be the best way to go here, actually. So we'll make those three letter abbreviations. And then we can also come and change these colors. So I can double click here to change the color. Um, and we're gonna leave this one the same. We'll change June to more of a green color. And then we'll change August to a pink color. Okay, and so those are going to be the colors for our bars. And now we can click OK. And our bars still aren't showing up. That's okay, we'll get this fixed. Let's go ahead before we do that and just change the symbology of this layer a little bit so that it's easier to see what's going on. So we're going to keep this simple fill. We're going to turn this to no brush. We're gonna keep our stroke color, we can keep it black. And let's change this to points and make it about two points, okay? And now let's go back over and open up our attributes here. Let's go to rendering. And so here's where we can adjust our rendering, opacity, bar spacing, things like that. And we're just gonna keep this as the default for now we can come down to our size, and here's why things aren't showing up, because our maximum value is set to zero. And we can come down to our attribute, and let's just set these equal to the maximum um, in August, and let's find it. So it'll be our maximum value in August, so our bar length will be set to that, and we this will be our maximum bar length. So let's click apply here and see if that changes. And there you go. So let's go take a look. So you can see now we have these charts, these bar charts showing up, histograms. 
But you can also see they don't look real great. They're kind of squished. They're kind of um, not tall enough. So we want to go back and adjust those rendering settings to fix that. Let's go back into our properties. And we can keep these sizes the same. We can make our bar length here. Let's adjust this maybe, let's try 15. So that'll triple those in length. And we can come back to our rendering and we can change our bar spacing. And let's change this to about two. And let's click OK and see how that looks. And now you can see that those bars look a little better. We can see the variation through time a little better with those bars. And, but you can see we have some overlap here, especially on this one and on this one with the polygon boundaries. Now we can go in and we can adjust that by going into our placement. And here we can put inside polygon. We can click apply. You saw those shift a little. Let's click OK. And now you can see they're much more inside the polygons there. And you'll also notice a great thing is that when we did this, we now have our um, symbology added over on the sides. So we have the symbology for the watersheds, and we also have symbology for those bars, so that it's very obvious and very clear which each bar represents. And we can change our layer name to, to adjust that also. Okay, let's just take a look and see if there are any other settings we'd like to change here. Um, so we have our rendering. Um, we can change our axis line symbol if we'd like to. Um, we can change scale dependent visibility. So if we turn this on, the bars will only show up if we're zoomed at a certain zoom level. I'm going to leave this off because I want to show them all the time, but you can play with this and adjust it in order to have the, the charts appear or disappear at certain zoom levels. Um, we have our size here, which we've already adjusted. We've, we've gone through our placements. Um, we can look at our options. So we can change how this works. We can point these down. Uh, and if we do that, you'll see those bars, the axis gets switched. Uh, this is not a good application for that. We can have the bars go to the right. So if we apply that, I won't close it up. You can see that we're now pointing those bars over to the right. Um, we could do it to the left. Um, I think up is going to be the best here, so we'll apply that. And we can also adjust our legend here. Um, I'm not going to worry about any of this. I'm going to keep this the same. And so this is data defined size legend. Um, this will work with something like pie charts where you want to have your pie charts bigger for um, larger NDVI just divide it out by different areas. And we cover pie charts in the next level QGIS course also with some different data with land cover data. Okay, so that is how you can show these bar charts on maps with QGIS. It's, uh, it's really cool to do. It makes sure maps gives them an added level um, of information. I'm going to say OK here. And I'm going to show you this in layout view just really quick. And so if we go to project, um, lay, uh, new print layout here, and we just call this charts and say OK. Um, we're just going to add here a map. So we click on this and we'll drag this over. And you can see that our charts now are added to our map. We can now go ahead and add a legend entry here. We'll drag our legend down here. Um, and you can see that we have these included in our legend. If we wanted to adjust this, we turn off auto update. We come here, we double click on it, and we say, you know, this is Huck and Watershed and DVI. Um, and that gives us a pretty clear legend about what all that information is about. And so like I said, from here you can adjust this. You could add some contextual base map layers, but you have those nice charts to show for each watershed this change through time, which allows you to display a lot of information on a map, um, on one map. So there you have it. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Once again, this video is available with the data on geospatialschool.com. Just sign up for the ad-free YouTube videos course. You'll get the video ad-free and you'll get the data. And you can also check out the Next Level QGIS course, Mastering Spatial Analysis, to become a master of spatial analysis, which is the number one skill you need as a geospatial scientist, geospatial professional of any kind. Spatial analysis is a thing that differentiates you and sets you apart in your field. Thanks for watching.